Hey, Angle Lake kids, it's good to be with you here again. I'm Pastor Cody. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll get started. God, I thank you so much for this time. I pray you just bless this lesson, Lord God. Help it to soak into our hearts and into our minds, Lord God, and go with us through this week and with us through our life. In your name, amen. All right. So today, we're going to be continuing our little series on James, and this is going to be on James chapter 4. So you guys can skip ahead and get there real fast if you want to. Uh, James chapter 4 is what we'll be reading from today. Um, we're going to be learning how to become stronger Christians through humility. We're going to com uh, complete a couple different things, different activities um, to help us understand that. What does the word humble mean? What does the word humble mean, do you think? And again, you know, I love to ask questions. And while I'm asking you these questions, you can go ahead and pause this video because I don't want you guys to get the answer before you've had time to talk about it because I'm going to talk about it too. So if you need to, for more time, pause the video, talk about it in your group, and then keep going. So what does the word humble mean? I like to put it this way. It's thinking of yourself less and others more. Thinking of yourself less and others more. Um, why is being humble difficult for us, do you think? Why is being humble difficult for us? Again, take some time to talk about it. Don't just listen to me talk, all right? I would say it's because we sin, right? And we want to get our own way instead of you know, making sacrifices and letting others have their way or helping others get their way. We want our way, right? And that's what makes it so difficult as people to be humble. Pride is a sin and the opposite of humble, the opposite of humility. We're going to start by reading James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. So if you're there, follow along. James 4, 1 through 3. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but do not have, so you will kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So based off of this verse, what are some different outward expressions of pride, do you think? Pride being the opposite of humility. What are some outward expressions that the Bible told us here? One of them is fighting, quarreling, right? Another one, a pretty Severe one is killing. It mentioned killing. Another is being jealous, coveting, like you want what someone else has. And there's a lot of different things. Now let's think of the opposite, humble reactions. What are some humble reactions? Okay, so it would be the opposite of those things I just said, fighting or killing or being jealous. One would be, Walking away, right? Instead of fighting, just walking away. The other be refusing to hurt someone, refusing to hurt someone. And another would be just being thankful, being thankful for what you do have. One thing is for sure, we must accept humility into our lives if we want to become strong believers. Going to college and going to school, I had a lot of different teachers um, and instructors. And one in particular, he was a very humble person. Like, he's been there since the school started. So if anybody had the, the right to brag and be like, oh, look at me, like, it was this guy. But he was so humble. Like, and he he became one of my best friends. I still talk to him today. And, I mean, he was just someone to look up to. Like, I could see, like, how humble he was 
and how much he just wanted for everyone else to succeed, everyone else to do good. And he would spend all of his time and effort doing that, helping people succeed. He was a really great guy and a really huge impact in my life. Next, we're going to read James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to your God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. Excuse me. You double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning. Or, wait, yeah, to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. And so this is a bunch of good examples of how to be humble, right? What can we do to increase, to make ourselves more humble, to increase our humility? One thing that we read, and again, you guys, I know I'm going ahead here. Pause the video. Take some time to talk about this. What are some more things we can do to be humble? Don't just listen to me talk. Have some discussion. You know, involve your parents too. What can you do to be more humble? First off, we saw in here is submitting to God, right? Submitting to God. Just knowing that he's the head over our life. Like he's our leader, right? And accepting that, saying that. Like, that's a huge step in the right direction. Another way to increase our humility, the Bible says to resist the devil. I like the second part. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Pretty awesome. Next one was come near to God, and he will come near to you, right? So draw near to God. Spend time with God. Repent, right? Ask for forgiveness of our sins. And that repent part doesn't just mean we ask for forgiveness and then we keep doing that same thing. That means we ask for forgiveness and we change, right? We turn from that thing, go the opposite direction from it. <laughs> and our last one that we saw was grieve over our sins. First, submitting to God is necessary if we want to become strong and humble Christ followers. I think that's why it was at the beginning of that is we have to submit ourselves to God. That's the first step, right? And then we must actively resist sin, resist temptation. God will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear, what we can take. And will even provide a way out. Did you guys know that? I'm going to go back a couple books here to 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. And you don't need to turn there. You can listen to me if you want. So, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it, so that you can handle it. Doesn't mean we're handling it on our own. He's helping us in big ways. We're not alone in this. That's another awesome thing to look at. We must ask the Lord to give us self-control so we can resist the devil and embrace humility, embrace being humble. <clears throat> Lastly, humility requires selfless and sacrificial service. Selfless and sacrificial service. Like Jesus, who gave up his own life. We're going to read James 4, verses 13 through 17. James 4, 13 through 17. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, 
spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. Were the people in these verses being humble or prideful? And how do we know? Well, we must know or we must see that our goals, what we want to do in life, they need to match God's plans, right? They need to match what God wants to truly make us strong and humble believers. Our plans should match his plans, right? It should go along with what he has planned. In closing, you guys, and this will take you, you know, you know, the next 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so, um, I have a craft for you guys to kind of help you remember um, what we talked about today. We talked about being a servant, right, there towards the end, and we talked about having a humble heart, right, the opposite of prideful, humble, thinking of ourselves less and thinking of others more, right? And so to help you remember that, you guys can go ahead and uh, take a piece of construction paper or just a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what color it is. And you guys can make a little art and, and craft thing. And you can color it whatever colors you want. But write out servant hands and humble heart. Servant hands and humble heart. To help you to remember to be that servant that God has called you to be. To follow along in the plans that he has and to have a humble heart while doing it, while living this life. And so with the hands, you can either trace your own hands onto the paper, or if your parents are okay with it, okay? I don't, <laughs> if your parents are okay with it, ask them first. You can also, like we've done in class before, use a little bit of uh, pastel paint that washes off in water. Um, kind of put some on your hands and then press your hands onto the paper. Okay, and then wash your hands before you touch anything else. Okay, ask your parents first, though, if you can do that, if you even have that stuff. And then you're going to draw a heart in the middle. And again, you can color it and decorate it however you want. And then I challenge you to hang it somewhere where you'll see it every day, like on the fridge, on your bedroom door, <laughs> wherever, next to your bed. Um, but somewhere you see it every day, so you're reminded to serve people, to help people, and to have a humble heart. So that's my challenge for you guys. Also a cool little craft for you to do. So just to recap our lesson today, we talked about becoming a strong and humble Christian, that it requires submitting to God, right? that we need to resist temptation and that we need to repent or be repentant over our personal sins. When we sacrificially serve like Jesus did, then our humility will grow and even positively affect others. It'll make others so happy. You will impact so many lives, so many hearts, for Jesus. And people will see that and they'll wonder, what's different in you? And then, the cool part, you can tell them about Jesus and you can lead them to accept Jesus in their own hearts. We're going to go ahead and pray. And if you personally have never done that, accepted Jesus into your heart, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I know that I have done wrong. God, I know that you died for my sins, 
that you were on the cross and that you rose from the grave. It's as simple as declaring that, believing that, asking him to forgive your sins and to come into your heart. And that's it. He's a part of your life forever. <laughs> and he's waiting. He's just waiting for you to, you know, invite him on in. And so we're going to close in a little bit of prayer. And if you said that prayer, or if you're about to say that prayer, make sure you tell someone, tell one of us pastors, tell us, you know, your parents, because we want to celebrate with you, because that's an awesome thing. All right. Lord, I just pray that you give us strength to, to sacrifice our time, to sacrifice things we want to do, to serve people, God, just like Jesus did, serve people. Served him so much that he gave his own life. God, I pray we would serve people and have humility, be humble in our lives. To not be like, oh, look at me, but to look at others and to help others and to serve others just the way you did, Lord. We thank you in your name. Amen. All right, guys. I love you. I hope to see you on Sundays. Quick announcement. Um... We're trying to start back up the toddler class. Um, I have one teacher, and so we can't start the class until we have at least two teachers. And so if we don't get two teachers signed up, then we're going to have to wait longer to bring back the toddler class. And so if your parents have taught before, ask them if they want to help. Um, <laughs> we, need, we need more teachers and assistants, so... I hope to see you guys. The older class is going, um, which is the first through fifth grade. So if you're a part of that, I hope to see you come into this classroom on Sundays after worship. Uh, we've been teaching some good lessons on parables. It's been fun. So hope to see you here. Love you guys. Have a blessed weekend.